Hello, and what the heck is up, my Atlanteans? These are my new nails. Let's not talk about how this one is shorter. I actually broke this one, like, literally the second day I had these on. It was so annoying, but you know what? You can't really tell, and it's still cute. Okay, guys, so for today's video, we have something really exciting to open together. So, a previous video, I had just opened, like, an expensive, fancy Monster High doll. I opened a Vampire Heart. Draculaura and apologies for that video. I feel like that video was like kind of like serious for absolutely no reason I was just really sick when I made that video. So maybe I was like on another like plane of life or something but um, I mean I Really like the effort I put into it. So I'm gonna try to do the same this video because for this video We will be opening up I mean, you could tell by the title, but we have a certain style, Frankie. Frankie is obviously my favorite character. Oh, Elvira. So I'm going to also like kind of give you guys like a rundown on all of the situations with this Frankie. So this Frankie came out on Amazon. Oh God, oh no, when did this come out? We're gonna say October 20th. This particular doll was designed by Annalise Lau, same, same designer as the Vampire Heart Draculaura. So you know that we're going to be getting good quality. <laughs> At least good quality design, which is what Monster High was all about. Okay, so let's get right into this, shall we? Okay, so this is what the box looks like. It's very different from the Vampire Heart Draculaura. That is because this doll was at a $50 price point, so it was literally half the price of the fancy, fancy Draculaura. But that, we had like half the budget for the packaging, which is like completely fine. Would have been cool if it was like coffin shaped or like maybe lightning bolt shape. I don't know, I don't know. But it's a very mundane box, but also like it's still like, still it's still interesting, you know? My apologies for the glare, but that is what Frankie looks like inside of the box. For this video, I will be using she, her pronouns for this particular version of Frankie. So at the top, it says stitched in style of Frankie Stein in like cursive, and it's like holographic and blue, which is really pretty. Got some like b barbed chain. Can y'all even see that? You've got some like barbed chains going around the words, and like some scissors, some sewing stuff. Point of this doll is to kind of hone in on the idea that Frankie made her own clothes, so this is kind of like an ode to dressmaking. We have a big window, we have Frankie stepping out of the curtain that looks to have been a part of her dress, which I really like. I, even though it's like a very mundane packaging, I still really appreciate the effort they put in for the like stellar storytelling for like the packaging, you know? Side, we have more stitches, more lightning bolts. We have Frankie's original, you see it? Original skelet. Top, more stitches, it's still open here. I love the mismatch vibe that we're doing because you know Frankie is very like mismatch. <laughs> and then this is the back of the box. Unfortunately, we don't get any illustrations at all of this version of Frankie, which is really, really sad, but photographs, like, don't even do her justice, like, what she looks like in person. She's gorgeous. Frankie Stein is stitched together in a look that electrifies. Stitching style with edge, Frankie Stein stuns in a deconstructed couture gown that celebrates the timeless art of tailoring and dressmaking. Reminiscent of a dress mannequin, a halter bustier with a top with top stitching is paired with a rouged overskirt with asymmetric layer layers of a of creeperific tool. Damn. Damn. Accented with a dramatic chain, a gorgeous caged headdress with a crown of needles and matching chain bracelets create high voltage fashion. Her look is finished with patchwork skelet. Skeletos? Skeletos. With a chic needle point heel. Elegant and electrifying, Frankie Stein is perfectly pulled together in a look that will have ghouls falling apart at the seams. That's what that says. And once again, we have the Sister Style Frankie logo. And then on the side, Monster Hunt. The bottom, it says age grade. This product is intended for doll collectors and is not intended for children under 14 years. So. This is okay. <laughs> okay, and with that, that is her box. I'm gonna go ahead and take her out of the box and we're gonna take a closer look at her and everything that she comes with. Okay.
Okay, so I just got Frankie out of the box and I'm really excited. She looks gorgeous. Um, but before that, let's talk about the little things that she comes with. First of all, this is what the back of her box looks like after you take her out. For me, it's the way that there was this little blue thread and this little, where is it? This little needle. Like, I think that's so cute. Like, that little extra detail that's, like, hidden behind her. Like, that's so cute. Something that you wouldn't see unless you took her out, too. So, like, I really appreciate that for the, um people that take their dolls out of box. Next, after you take her out of the box, we have the Certificate of Authenticity. It certifies that your Monster High Stitch and Style Frankie Stein doll is materialized through the collaborative efforts of designers and artists at Mattel. And at the bottom, we have a little signature of Annalise Lau, which is really pretty. And we have some stitches on it, very cute. Should I feel what this feels like? Because the the Vampire Heart Dracula doll felt really nice. Okay, so it's kind of just like a textured paper. Next, we have her stand, which is... Like, it would have been fine. Like, why do they make them so, so fragile? My, my Draculaura, my Vampire Heart Draculaura also came with one of these stands, and I already broke it. She's not using it anymore, because, like, I don't want to break it anymore. But it's, I mean, this is gorgeous. Like, this is gorgeous. And it makes sense, because, like, how are you supposed to put, like, one of the, the hip-hugging stands around her if... Like, her dress is so poofy, so, like, I understand why this is a thing. It's just, like, why are they so fragile? And that is everything that she comes with. So, let's get straight into the da. So, first of all, here is the overall style of Stitch and Style Frankie Stein. As you can see, it does feel like a mismatched kind of crazy, <laughs> crazy put-together type of outfit. But, obviously, it fits really well for Frankie. Frankie is a very mixed match of different monsters and like different heritages. So like this is very, very Frankie in my opinion. Okay. And this doll is kind of like a tribute to dressmaking. So there are a lot of like little elements that hint to like body forms and sewing materials and all that, which is really cool. It also makes sense a lot for Frankie if you guys remember Redorella. Frankie Stein, like there was a lot of like sewing situations there. Starting from the top down, Frankie has, first of all, Saran hair, thank god. Obviously, um, it's gonna need a little washing. This is what it looks like right out of the box. She will need a little bit of a wash if like that's something you want to do. I love that her hair is primarily black this time. We never really get that. I think the last one was... Was it I Heart Fashion Frankie? That was the last time we got hair that was like mostly black, I think. Or was it mostly white? Something like that. We only have white in the streaks of her bangs. And then she also had these like tendrils that like kind of frame her face. And those are also white. Otherwise, everything else is black saran, which is really cool. Starting off with the headpiece that kind of floats around her bun. Um, the point of, like, this whole situation, it's, so it's supposed to kind of look like those electric thingies. If you've seen, um, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, the, the electric ball things, and these needles are supposed to look like it's kind of, like, floating around it, like, kind of in, like, a anti-magnetism type of way, which is really cool. You can see all of these chains going down her head. And we have these really cool safety pins that go down here too. Look how intricate this dang headpiece is. I'm not one for headpieces. I much prefer an elaborate hairstyle. But this is crazy to me. I mean, it is only one piece of plastic or like rubbery plastic. And it is absolutely not painted. But it's just the way that it like fits her head, like her whole entire head. So the back of the bun hides a little part of the headdress. Let's look at it. So it's just more chain link and this type of fashion, it's supposed to look like one of those um, like electric, oh crap, what is it called? A Faraday cage, that's what she calls it. That's what this is supposed to look like. Faraday, Faraday, I don't know the word. And at the bottom of these chains, we have a 
variety of sewing materials. So first we have this little, is this like a little seam ripper thing? Kind of? <laughs> we have two of those, so it's, it kind of mirrors on each side. And then on the ends, we have these little, we have these little point turners is what they're called. But also this is supposed to be like a little nod to OGG1 Frankie. Because um, most of her fashion, she had a collar. And to keep the shape of the collar, sometimes uh, manufacturers would put these point turners inside of there. And I remember that from being a church boy. <laughs> Here are her earrings. They are just like these needles with like thread kind of going around. And one thing that um, Annalise was excited about was the fact that they didn't really have to worry about like kid play. So they can make things like as pointy as they like as they would be allowed to, but pointier than it would be like a doll you could buy on the shelves, you know? This is the face of the Frankie that I got. <laughs> I feel like she might be a little bit wonky, but also her bangs are not straight. So I feel like it's one of the two or both that's making it like kind of weird looking. But I'm gonna say like, I truly don't care. I'm not one to care too much about screening, especially when it comes to one of these like online exclusive dolls because like I know I'm not going to see what I'm going to get so I'm just going to like take what I get you know. Okay, this is the face. It is painted and designed by Stone Procaccino on Instagram. It's supposed to be a like mixture of ho both Hong Couture uh, Frankie dolls in terms of like actual screening but the makeup is actually all new. I love that like metallic dark gray silver lip like that's so like that's what Frankie deserves. Going down to this gorgeous crazy dress we have this like halter top that is actually tied in the back of her neck with a ribbon. We have her signature neck bolt. Thank god that's one thing that I really miss from G1 is Frankie's neck bolt. Here is the halter top. I love this tool. I love how it kind of gathers at the top and I love how the creases kind of make this gradient going down it. Here is the bodice. It is supposed to be kind of shaped like um, one of those dress forms, you know? And I love this contrast white stitching that goes around it. It's made out of this like pleather material, so it's smooth and nice. I'm just like kind of scared that it's gonna crack over time, but like we'll find out when we find out, right? Here is Frankie's arm piece. It's actually two separate pieces. That is so cute. Um, it's made out of this barbed chain link and it's actually also supposed to kind of look like how body forms also have that like crisscross pattern type of situation. Now talking about this crazy skirt, si skirt situation. So we have two layers of skirt here, or technically three, but like there's two that are visible. So first of all, we have this gorgeous satin over skirt, which is crazy. Like the fact that they rouged all this and had this like chain like plastic chain perfectly separated into these separate spots like that's just so pretty to me this is actually an original pattern for the dress it is made from the original frankie dress like it's inspired by that say for these like metallic uh stitches that are kind of thrown throughout it but actually the pattern is meant to look kind of crazy as well like it's not one straight pattern they actually had to print it in different directions so when it's rouged like this it would it would look right you know what i mean so that is really cool i obviously love this chain another ode to original frankie every single frankie that ever exists like the the chains that go along with her and them we have this little pin cushion that is holding everything up at the top here the barbed chain oh oh you know what they're all different chains oh, i didn't even notice so this top one is like like og frankie's um like stitching like it looks like her stitching we have the like normal not normal but like the basic chain up at the top here we have all of these needles on the side here and you could see all of these like pins and all of the, I don't know what they're called, like clasps holding everything together. There's like a little skelet up there. We've got some string. Um, we have more of that chain. We have some of this chain link that looks like a rib cage. It's the same barb chain, I think. Yeah, it's the same chain that is on her arm. And then at the bottom here, we have like actual barbed wire 
just like for the extra touch. And my favorite part about this whole thing is, oh my god, wait, is that a heart? Stop it, is that a heart? That's so cute. But here is the little pair of scissors that are literally hanging down off of it as if she just got done finishing the dress and had to like run out, right? So cute. The dress, the top dress is made out of a satin material. Um, it's not the greatest satin material, but it's nice, like it's still nice. And it is elasticated at the top and it's meant to look bunched and kind of like hastily put together as well. And there is a little clasp on the side here and I'm going to try to remove it. And we're going to look at the second layer of her dress. Oh, actually you could like clearly see it on the side here. So this is the overskirt, literally at the front, and then this is the second layer of dress. So I'm removing the chain, and I'm removing, I think it's via Velcro still? <gasps> no, it's not! Wow, okay. So I'm scared, but I'm gonna do this for you guys. The dress has no Velcro. It's, a it's like literally actually elasticated at the top, so I'm pulling this dress down so we can get a closer look. Okay, so this is what the over skirt looks like by itself. On the inside, there's actually this little tool material. So this kind of is supposed to give like this, maybe more texture, more, what is it called? More structure to it maybe, like to keep everything together. Oh, this is actually really pretty. This is the underskirt. This one is done up by Velcro though. We will be removing this momentarily because we have to look at the shoes. But as you can see, we have this like, asymmetrical um, black skirt up at the top here to provide to provide some modesty. And then here we have one, two, three, four layers of tulle of black and blue tool to also create more like more of this like illusion that it has like all of these little layers which is so pretty i'm just like obsessed with the way that they decided to like put this all together like first of all the fact that this is actually elastic i mean i won't be putting it on and off so much and it would also stretch it out so i don't want to do that but like the way that you're able to just like also pose her like that, like that's so pretty. And last but absolutely not least, let's talk about Frankie's shoes. So just like the rest of her outfit, it's supposed to look hastily made as well. It's this platform pointy skeleto, which is gorgeous. So it's kind of all like um, stitched together, like the actual um, maybe body part of the shoe is actually stitched together and there's all of these threads going around it There's some chain on the back here, too. I love that the platforms also look like it was half done literally half done It's open at the bottom Like the platforms are half open like that's so cute and I thank goodness that the platforms are painted separately and For the heel first of all, I love how pointy they are like it's very it's giving very, um, very collector, <laughs> very premium. And they are also this needle, like this black needle with thread going around the bottom too. Like, wow, like these shoes are gorgeous. I love that they're pointy. I don't think we've seen too many pointy Monster High shoes, but here we are. So absolutely in love. Alrighty, everyone. So that is Stitch and Sell Frankie herself. Obviously, I'm fully obsessed with her. I love her so much. I will be posing her with my Vampire Heart Draculaura for now. It would be so cool if we got like one of those like what if dolls for Frankie. Like what if Frankie was, I don't know, crazy. <laughs> so that is pretty much the doll. Now let's talk about price point. So Frankie was about 50 American dollars. So if you don't know what that means, that means that is a lot of money um, for international people. Um, obviously, it, Mattel is an American company and uh, so it makes sense that it would start off in USD, so I get it, it's just annoying. And I am right next to America, I live in Canada, and I think for each dollar, it's almost two dollars here. So I had to pay almost, I think I paid 
over like just over a hundred dollars for the doll by its or the doll plus shipping like over a hundred dollars altogether which is annoying for me um obviously so worse so much worse for anyone over like out of the continent i can't imagine like first of all the shipping then you also have to pay duties and then you also have to pay like um import fees like there's just too much so like in that in that case um that is something for you to decide particularly for these online dolls because um they are exclusive to online they are not going to be released overseas even when dolls are released overseas um they're usually like just so so much more expensive i love fancy fancy monster high dolls like that's just it's like so crazy to me because like monster high high schoolers like they always usually go for like casual outfits so i'm really happy that we have some like really cool fashionable well i don't know fashionable, but very high concept dolls that makes us all very happy do i think she's worth the 50 dollars um it's kind of giving quality of like uh maybe 40 dollar monster high doll so i don't think they are worth the 50 usd and they're giving 30 CAD so if that's something that kind of bothers you watch out for that but do I think she's a gorgeous doll absolutely and I am so happy with her I will be posting pictures I haven't posted on my Instagram in so long so I will be posting soon don't worry I know you're worried I'm gonna bounce I hope you guys like this video I was really I was having so much fun making it I love talking about like all the little details with all of these fancy monster high dolls I love that the designers post like little um, like snippets of the design choices and like why everything did every why everything was the way it was like that makes me really interested from a design standpoint I'm actually an art student in case you didn't know that's everything for this video I hope you guys liked it please like comment and subscribe if you want hit me up in the links in my description and I'll see you all on the flip side Boom.